I remember one time when I was coming home from college, I was flying from Pittsburgh to Phoenix, Arizona, and we'd been on the plane for maybe an hour, and this guy locks himself in the bathroom, and he wouldn't come out. He was yelling all kinds of profanities, and the flight attendant was trying to get him out of there. And Well, as it turns out, we ended up having to land the plane in Chicago, and the police came on board and arrested the guy and gets him off. And the whole thing was kind of exciting, honestly. I thought it was interesting, never happened before. I thought it was kind of cool. So it turns out we take off, and we've been flying maybe another hour or two, and the captain comes on board. And he says to us, he says, uh, the stop in Chicago was obviously unexpected, and as it turns out, uh, we need some more fuel. So we're gonna have to stop in Albuquerque, New Mexico, uh, to be able to get some more fuel. Well, there's this lady that was sitting next to me, and the entire time, she was just so frustrated. I mean, we land in Chicago, she gets all mad and angry, and, and then this just was like the straw that broke the camel's back. She's just like so mad, and she's saying things. She goes, I can't believe we have to stop. And, and I'm thinking to myself, okay, I mean, what's the option? It's like, yeah, I think we probably got enough gas. Let's just kind of go ahead and see what happens, huh? Well, I remember that she looks to me, and she says to me, how is it that you can stay so calm? What I think she's really saying is, what is it that animates your life? How is it that in the midst of, of these unscheduled things or these unexpected things or these inconveniences or these frustrations, how is it that you can still be peaceful? In the scriptures in Matthew, the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus says that we are going to be known by our fruit. That's one of the reasons I came here at this church, the Franciscan Mission Church in San Diego. It was one of the first missionary churches in the evangelization in California. This is a concrete, practical example of the fruit of the faithfulness of the early Franciscans. You see, all of our lives, like the lives of the Franciscans, all of our lives are producing fruit. And the question that we need to be able to ask ourselves is, what type of fruit is my life producing? And, and coming to understand that people see that. I mean, people, this lady on the plane, she saw the fruit of my life at that point, not always like that, but at that point, there was peace. God was present in that. You know, as my relationship with the Holy Spirit grew and I learned to be more and more docile to the Holy Spirit, now it's like a daily walk, you know? Now it's every minute I'm calling on the Holy Spirit asking, what's next, what's next? And, you know, it's, I hate to say it, but, you know, God never comes down and lays out a blueprint for us, for our life, you know? But He always says, here's the next step. And if you trust, the more you trust and take that next step. So on a daily walk, you know, every day I rely completely on the Holy Spirit to guide how I raise my children, how I am a man in my marriage, uh, particularly in my job, you know, we're constantly asking, our God, you know, let us step out of the way, tell us what you want for our life, and reform us continually over and over and over again. The best part about a relationship with the Holy Spirit, I guess, would be the fruits. Joy, peace, patience, kindness, because, uh, you know, the gifts are really important for the building up of the church and for evangelization, but the truth is, is that the, the fruits of the Holy Spirit are what make me feel closer to God, are what bring about this closeness to the Lord, and growing in those fruits are what make me feel His presence inside me. So it was in that way, making, creating a space for silence in my life that I think the Holy Spirit was able to begin speaking to my heart. Silence is really important, and I think that that's one of the ways the enemy is um, really gaining ground in our society is by creating more and more noise so that young people aren't comfortable being alone, being in the silence. And that's precisely where our Lord is able to speak. So I'm very grateful that for some reason I was um, willing to enter into silence, even if it was just for a few minutes a day, so I could listen to, to the voice of the Lord, which isn't, you know, people ask me, what does that sound like? You know, is it like, you were called to be a sister or something, and it's not that, it's not an audible voice like that, but it's a presence of peace. And when I began to be in tune with, with the peace that the Holy Spirit wanted to give me, it became this kind of guiding principle for me. So when people say, how do you know it's the Spirit, the Spirit of the Lord, the Holy Spirit? I say, look for the peace. Where is the peace? Not a superficial kind of, oh, this feels good, this is... It's something deeper. It's something in your heart of hearts where the, the craziness of the storm subsides and you can rest in it and, 
and you know that he's calling you. St. Paul actually talks about this in the fifth chapter of Galatians. He says, now the works of the flesh are obvious, immorality, impurity, licentiousness, adultery, sorcery, hatred, rivalry, jealousy, outbursts of fury, acts of selfishness, dissension, factions, envy, drinking bouts, orgies, and like. Now, I'm not much of a list person. I don't, I don't write all kind of lists and pay attention to all these lists and, and the whole, all the top 10 lists at the beginning of the year, at the end of the year. I just really don't pay a lot of attention to that. But it seems to me that this is probably a list we should pay attention to. What kind of fruit is your life producing? Uh, anger, adultery, jealousy, rivalry? If our life is producing that kind of fruit, we need to be able to take a step back and ask ourselves why. Why is it that, that I'm angry all the time? Why is it that I get frustrated at situations that don't seem like they should frustrate us that much? Why is it that at times you get so frustrated with your wife or your husband or your children? Um, why is it that anger or drunkenness or jealousy or rivalry seem to be the dominant feelings, the dominant emotions that you have? Go before the Lord and ask him, what kind of fruit my life is producing? And if you don't know, uh, ask somebody you really trust. Ask them, ask them, do you see me as being angry or frustrated or jealous or envious or, or any of that list, huh? Because here's what's really, really important. This isn't just a list of maybe bad habits or, or, or things that we need to work on a little bit. This type of fruit has eternal consequences. You see, the thing about it is, is if our life is producing that kind of fruit, it, it not only disrupts my own heart, it disrupts the heart of my family, uh, disrupts the heart of the people that we work with and, and people that we come in contact with every day. But compare that or contrast that with the fruit of the Spirit that St. Paul talks about. He says the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. I mean, contrast these two lists, the, you know, the anger and the frustration and licentiousness and jealousy, compare it to peace, patience, kindness, generosity. The Catechism says the fruits are signs or manifestations that our life is being transformed or perfected by God. I mean, that's something, I just think that's such a cool image that, that the fruits of the Spirit are signs and manifestations that my life is being transformed, that my life is being changed. You know, oftentimes people come to me and, and they say to me, Father Dave, I just don't feel like I'm growing in the spiritual life. I don't feel like I'm going anywhere. And, and how do we really know? Well, it's not like there's this divine dipstick that we can kind of measure whether or not we're growing the spiritual life. I think the fruits of the Spirit are a great way because those are, as the Catechism says, they're manifestations and signs that my life is being transformed. I mean, contrast that from the list of the fruits of the flesh, anger, frustration, jealousy, and then you take a look at the Spirit. Um, patience, gentleness, kindness. And the thing that's so important too is that the reality is that the fruits of the Spirit are what most people see in my life. I mean, they don't know whether or not I pray necessarily or what gifts that the Lord has given me, but what they do know is, am I patient? Am I generous? Am I kind? Am I loving? Huh? I mean, we need to pray and ask for the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Uh, Robert Frost has the po in his poem, you know, the, about the paths, the two different paths. The key part to interpreting that poem is the journer, the sojourner, he has to start walking. And I think when we're confused, when we're paralyzed, when we're discerning, often the first step is to begin walking in one direction. And either the fruit of peace comes from the Spirit, or there's an unsettling, an anxiousness, a sense of, e I thought this was right yesterday, but I'm feeling movement in the other direction and one of those moments in my life was I was going to be a financial planner. I had passed the, the test for insurance licensing. I was in the middle of the training and I thought I wasn't going the right path but as I journeyed each time I went back to the office I kind of felt the Lord say hey I want to use you but not in this way and uh, that led me a few weeks into it, going to the manager and saying, hey, I don't know, but this isn't for me. And Here's my in, resignation. I picked you up and you came out and you're like, I ended it. And I was like, <laughs> all right. <laughs>
you don't uh, uh, try to exercise the fruits. The fruits are what they are. They come f as a result of our life in God. If, as we're living this life of God, as we are being faithful, as we're allowing Jesus to be Lord of our lives and are truly surrendering ourselves to the, to the uh, guidance of the Spirit, the fruits begin to be evident, the fruit of love, the fruit of peace, joy, uh, 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 and, and, and chastity. All these fruits are, are going to be evident. Sometimes people try to go after the fruits, <laughs> but the fruits are born from a life. You don't go after them. And so uh, I, 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 I remember uh, one of the, <laughs> one of the uh, times people uh, were praying for baptism of the Holy Spirit and the lady came back later and she says, I didn't get it. I said, what did you get? I didn't get it. I said, there's no it. God baptized you in this Holy Spirit. He filled you last week. Well, tell me about your week. Well, nothing really happens except I was really more joyful. I said, duh, <laughs> that's a fruit. <laughs> you experience the joy that comes from living a life of relationship with God. And so the fruits are, are, are there for us to, to experience, but we don't go after fruits. So the first thing that we do is, is what we often do, and that is that we go before the Holy Spirit and we ask that the Holy Spirit first give himself to us, that, that it is the fruit of a life in the Holy Spirit. So the first thing, and we've said this a million times, we ask that the Holy Spirit come. The Holy Spirit would be present to us and produce fruit. Like, I just think of my own life. I would say probably 99% of the stupid things that I've done in my life or the sinful things I've done in my life often or because I lack self-control. My body tells me, or the flesh tells me, oh, go ahead and do it, it doesn't matter, it's not that big a deal, go ahead and say this or do that, and, and I just lack self-control in my life. And, and a fruit of the Holy Spirit is self-control, and I just think it's a really, really important fruit because it affects so many other things. So I pray that God would, would send His Holy Spirit upon me and I would have a greater fruit of self-control, that I would be able to say no to the flesh. I'd be able to say no to the ninth piece of pizza. I mean. I need this a greater self-control or joy. Uh, just a beautiful, beautiful fruit of the Holy Spirit is joy. Uh, St. John the 23rd said that the surest sign of the Holy Spirit is joy. Huh? There's something attractive about joy. There's something about somebody who, who has a great joy that, that, that they have a passion for life and a passion for living and people recognize that and they see that. I think that's why Pope Francis probably said in his uh, document Evangelium. He mentioned joy, I think, 125 times or something like that in that text. Because we live in a world that desperately needs joy. But I can't just manufacture that joy. Joy isn't just this temporary happiness. Joy is a fruit of the Holy Spirit that, that allows us to know that God loves us. That it doesn't matter what happens, that, that nothing about God's love is going to change for us. And that produces in us a great joy. I love what Pope Francis says, particularly about joy. He says that we who are Christians, and we are Catholics, uh, we need to stop looking like sourpusses. Uh, I don't know how they translated that in Latin, but, but he said oftentimes we, we look like we're so sad or we're frustrated or angry, and, and we really allow the Holy Spirit to come and bring us a presence of joy. The other thing he says is, is Catholics need to stop looking like they're always coming back from a funeral, huh? So we pray, Lord, give me a greater joy in my life, a joy for living, a joy in, in being uh, saved, a joy in being Catholic, a joy in being Christian, huh? The Holy Spirit animates my life in different ways now than it did when I was single. Um, every morning, I set my alarm to get up before the kids so that specifically, I can go to the bathroom in peace and throw up a quick prayer in peace. If I don't, I at least throw up a quick come Holy Spirit before I go get the kids. When I don't do that, I feel like I'm, my prayer is come fights and tantrums. Like, I feel like if I don't call upon the Spirit the moment I wake up, literally I feel like hell breaks loose in my house. Like I, his, his presence is not here unless it's called forth. And for us, it very much animates my life in that just very simple prayer that I pray. But then also like when my kids are in timeout, the timeout is for them as much as it is for me. Because I'm sitting here, I'm like, Holy Spirit, you gotta change my fury to anger into right discipline like in this moment. Another fruit of the Spirit is, is patience, and, 
And I call patience the banana of the fruits of the Holy Spirit because it so quickly goes bad, huh? For me, a banana has to be perfectly yellow or, or I don't want to have anything to do with it. I give it to one of the other friars who likes it all brown and gross as far as I'm concerned. You know, I, I find that for patience, it's, it's most often the fruit that's mentioned about somebody else. You know, oh, Sharon, she's so patient. John is such a patient person. I think part of the reason is because, one, because it's so rare. You know, real deep patience is so rare. Uh, and the other, it's like all the fruits of the Holy Spirit, there's something really attractive about it. I mean, think for a moment how your life would be different with your spouse, uh, with your children, with the people you work with, if you had greater patience. <laughs> Imagine what your commute to work would be like if you had greater patience. It, it's not just making the decision, okay, I'm going to be more patient, I'm going to be more patient, because that often creates actually anxiety and more frustration because we're not able to be patient. Patience is a fruit of the Holy Spirit. Asking the Holy Spirit to be present to us, it produces more patience. And so, and the other scripture is one that is really a deep one, that God came to heal the brokenhearted. John 10, 10, I came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Unfortunately, most Christians, we walk around looking like we were baptized in lemon juice, but God wants more for us. He really does. The Holy Spirit is to give us animation and energy, not enthusiasm based upon our own sense of we can do it, guys. Let's go, we can do it. No, we can't do it, but we know the person that can do it, and it's the person of Christ. So John 10, 10, I've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. And you know, that scripture comes, as you know, right before, the scripture that comes right before is the enemy comes to kill, to steal, and destroy. But I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. It, it really is the first words on my lips. If I don't, if I don't have time to do a longer prayer, it's come Holy Spirit. And for me, I need that because instead of saying, come here, Paul Francis, I'm just like, come Holy Spirit, fill me before I go out and minister, teach, instruct my kids. I know that it's him acting through me and not just Casey which I'm reminded of my need for that more now in marriage and as a mom than I ever have been. All, all that he has for me, the need for love, peace, patience, joy, kindness, gentleness, I need it all. And I'm calling on it like specifically. And I feel like sometimes I'm just so dry, like when I'm at my wits end with a four-year-old, a three-year-old, and a three-and-a-half-month-old, I'm just saying like, you've gotta fill me now. And I've never felt that dry until I've been in this role. And conversely, I've never felt so filled up though at the same time. And it's probably like, you know, it's like he uses you in your emptiness, but it's totally him acting through that that is able to fill me up. The, the one thing I, I um, constantly try to tell people and, and, and the, the life lesson that I had was, I don't have to have all the words to be able to tell people about Jesus. Um, all I have to do is share what he did in my life and how he changed me, who I was, my encounter with Christ, and who I am now. And, and, and when people hear those words, that's more convincing than reading the entire Catholic Catechism. Um, because um, people see who you are, and they see who you are now, and they can't believe it. But they want that because yeah. <laughs> they see that joy, and they, they see um, a, a new sense of peace, and they, and they see that um, I don't have to have what I used to think I had to have to as a measure of success. My measure of success is um, knowing the love of God and telling people about Him and sharing that faith with with others. In in love, I mean. Love is, love is the greatest of the fruits, huh? That, that love, love which produces self-sacrifice, love which produces or love which puts the other person first. It's, it's a love that is ultimately from God and, it, and it's a fruit of the Holy Spirit that the desire, the way that we come into a relationship with the Holy Spirit more profoundly produces a greater love. And not just a love that I decide I'm gonna love, but a love which ultimately comes from God. Uh, that, that I experience the love of God and, and a fruit of that, a fruit of the Holy Spirit, is that I love better. You know, it, it's a lie right now, I think, that says uh, love is love or all love is equal. All love isn't equal. <laughs> the love of God is radically different and the fruit of the Holy Spirit, which is love, is different. It's, it recognizes the beauty in the other person. It's not consumed with self. It's, it's a self-giving love. It's a self-sacrificial love. That's a fruit of the Holy Spirit. 
Ultimately, we need to pray that God would send His Holy Spirit upon us and we develop a relationship with the Holy Spirit so that it produces much fruit because that has a profound impact on the people that we come in contact with. Again, imagine your life just in your family. If there was greater fruit, more generosity, more kindness, more patience, more love, more joy, uh, it, it, it changes our relationships, it changes our family, it changes uh, the people that we work with. The fruits of the Holy Spirit are incredibly attractive. And you'll have the same thing happen to you that happened to me. Somebody's gonna see that person's so patient or they're so kind or they're so generous or whatever, and they're gonna come to you and they're gonna say, how is it that you can stay so calm? Well, let me tell you what animates my life. We have an opportunity to tell them about the Holy Spirit. We have an opportunity to tell them about the wild goose. So here's something practical for us. Go before the Lord, be quiet and be still, and ask Him to show you the type of fruit your life is producing. Um, is it fruit of the flesh, or is it fruit of the Holy Spirit? And I invite you to be really, really honest about this, because it has great consequences in our own life, and our own spiritual life, but also the life of our family, our friends, people we come in contact with. And maybe from there, maybe say for a month, ask the Lord and His Holy Spirit to produce a fruit in your life. Choose one, joy. So for the next month, go before the Lord, go before the Holy Spirit and say, Lord, give me a greater joy. May I produce more joy in my life. I think that if we're able to focus on the Holy Spirit and then focus on a fruit of the Holy Spirit, uh, it begins to grow more. So let's pray. Lord Jesus, we ask that you would come with your Holy Spirit. Jesus, by the power of your Holy Spirit, reveal in our life the type of fruit that our life is producing. In your name, Lord, allow the Holy Spirit to reign more in our life. Free us from the fruits of the flesh, of, of anger and frustration and bitterness and, and jealousy. Lord, allow that fruit to be pruned in our life. Allow us, Lord, to produce fruits of the Holy Spirit, a greater love and joy and patience and kindness, gentleness, self-control, faithfulness. Lord, we ask that our life would produce more fruit so that we would experience you and experience your love and experience your presence more, but then also so that the people that we come in contact with can experience you and can experience your presence, your peace, your joy, your love. Lord, by the power of your Holy Spirit, fill our hearts so that we would produce a great abundance of fruit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Oh Spirit, come. Oh Spirit, come. Oh Spirit, come. Spirit, come. Oh, Spirit, come. Oh, Spirit, come. Oh, Spirit, come. Oh, Spirit, come. Spirit